Hello and welcome back to Flurry Sports. Uh, today we're just sort of talking about the Deshaun Watson situation. There's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of, uh, yet again, it kind of seems like the theme of our channel, but a lot of misinformation in the media, but truly nobody knows what's going on. So I think today we're just hoping to simplify some of the things that we know, some of the things we can expect. And for that, uh, we got Trevor Land here. Obviously, you've seen him on the channel a bunch, but he does have a background in criminal justice. He can give us further insight into this information and sort of dummy it down for us, for me, for uh, everybody listening. And uh, certainly better than, unfortunately, some of these NFL insiders who were surprised there was a second case. I think that kind of took everybody by surprise. And now everyone's throwing their hands in the air like, uh, what do we expect next? So, Trevor. What should we expect next? Like, what's going on with this entire case? Yeah, um, there was there was kind of a second case, quote unquote, that people were surprised about. Um, when you file criminal charges, it has to be where it occurred. Um, so that's why there was a second, quote unquote, case, because it was filed in a different county. Um, so I, I don't understand why people kind of miss that. That's just kind of basic criminal justice. But um where we were and a lot of the charges have kind of been dropped criminally, um, the Harris County District Attorney's Office, they presented their case against Watson to a grand jury. Um, the grand jury's role, and they're used like this in Texas, along with some other states, is to determine whether the state has sufficient evidence to charge the quarterback um, using evidence and testimonies. So um, this isn't even about like guilty. This is just whether the state has evidence to continue with the case. and. The grand jury, uh, they they didn't think they had enough. All the criminal charges were dropped. Um, Texas requires defendants to be indicted by a grand jury to bring about felony charges, usually. Um, however, they're also used to indict on lesser charges. Um, the important thing to understand about a grand jury is that, um, like, like I said, they aren't used to determine innocent or guilt. They're used to only decide whether the state has probable cause to file charges. And as I'll kind of get into later, um, that probable cause is a really big key term that I don't think a lot of people are understanding or seeing, but it really kind of drives this case. So basically, and obviously it sounds like there are some more women slash cases to be heard. Um, I'm not sure how many there are out there. We talked a little bit pre-show, like it's, it's very much up in the air how many there are left to be heard. There's a lot of uncertainty obviously some of it doesn't even really need to be made public via nfl insiders which is kind of the issue but I, like so if there's not probable cause for these past two grand juries to continue forward does it seem pretty much likely that that's the pattern that the rest of these are going to follow you think yeah, for sure. And um I think it's important to um Houston PD they took out search warrants um, and it, in these search warrants, you have to basically say what you're looking for, um, or why, you know, what you're investigating. And they said they were, uh, investigating a decent assault, um, which is actually a misdemeanor in Texas. So, um, I think it's important for people to understand that even if something does come up, um, the charge that Houston was looking at was $4,000 fine and up to a year in prison max. Um, but it, it's tough. Um, people need to understand just how high the burden of proof is for these criminal cases. And the fact that they didn't even have probable cause looking towards the future is not looking good for the prosecution in criminal cases. And even as I'll kind of get into a little bit later, civil cases as well. Yeah. So, I, I mean, there's two different lawsuits, I guess you can call them going on with this. There's the criminal versus civil, like you were just saying, and the whole grand jury thing here we were talking criminally right so then there's a whole another layer uh with the civil cases going on uh so do you think that would be something different do you think there's a is there a totally different process they have to go through for these or what um the process is kind of the similar but how it plays out is differently um civil civil cases are kind of weird because they're often resolved in mediation arbitration settlements um stuff like that and that's because of the low burden of proof, kind of that I talked about earlier for criminal cases, you need beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, I think it's important to note that these talks of mediation, arbitration, settlements, these broke down earlier in the process. 
Um, what that tells me is that the prosecution feels strongly that, um, that they're not just going to budge. And for me, that tells me that Deshaun Watson and his lawyer or lawyers um, feel confident that there's nothing there. Obviously, if you think there's something there, you're going to try to reach a settlement. And in civil cases, like I said, the burden of proof is a lot lower. Um, so the fact that they feel okay to be able to go to court for this is massive. I think that says a lot about um, how they feel the burden of proof is going to play out for them. Interesting. This all situation's messy. Like people, we're not even people aren't talking about exactly what it is, right? Like he went to all these massage parlors, and these are all different massage therapists. Dude had twenty two different massage therapists. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Like get hire what bud? Like take a page out of Russell Wilson's book and get a team that fill a specific pattern, but, uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And, yeah. And one of the things kind of, you know, I talked about the evidence too, and, um, you know, criminal cases, like I said, they need beyond a reasonable doubt. If you're able to look at that on a spectrum of one to 100 in terms of how certain you are, that's about 99. Um, for civil cases, it's called preponderance of evidence, um, which is basically more likely than not. I talked about that low bar, um, on a scale of one to 100, that's like 51%. Um, on the bar that's below, obviously, reasonable doubt, it's even below clear and convincing evidence. Um, so again, going back to how this all plays out, Deshaun Watson and his team feel confident that they're not even going to be charged civilly. Um, and seeing how low that bar is, you know, there are so many ways this can play out. And either way, there's going to be a mass of people that are very mad at how this ends out because, you know, from my standpoint, it doesn't look good from the prosecution. You're saying, you know, again, you're just throwing out uh, just general numbers. It's not like you, you need 51%, but you're saying 51% certainty or evidence, or whatever, just to hear it, get the case heard or to get a charge? To get, so in civil, to get a charge. Um, so that's okay. how low the bar is. Um, just 51%, just more likely than not. Um, kind of just a coin flip, which is crazy. Um, we saw it with OJ Simpson. Um, he was not found guilty criminally, but he was found guilty civilly in that um, whole debacle there. So um, he certainly still has a chance to be found guilty civilly, but he seems to think not with the fact that he's done settle with settlements. Okay. So with these uh, grand juries for the criminal cases, there was a timeline that we could uh, clearly map out. Like we knew when there's going to be decision stuff. For these civil cases, is there an actual timeline, even if it's not public, or could this be going on for years, essentially? This could be going on for a while. I don't know years, um, but with the juries, it's always so dicey. And, you know, if you if anybody who's watching has been on a jury, I don't mean to um, shame you by saying this, but juries, for the most part, are very unintelligent. Um in most cases, you have to get people who, you know, you trust to not let prior what they see on the internet judge them or people who haven't heard about it. And usually you have people who, if they haven't heard about this kind of stuff, they're probably not very um, educated. And when you combine that with Texas's high threshold um, to reach for sexual assault, you know, explaining this stuff to the jury, um, the jury kind of understanding what's going on. I mean, both sides might have to really hold their hands throughout their case, and that can really drag it on along a long time. That's interesting. Obviously, now, you know, football fans, Browns fans and everything, they're just trying to determine what Deshaun Watson's future is in the NFL. Obviously, he just signed a massive contract. What's the determination? Um, and from my point of view, obviously, NFL – operates their charges and stuff like that completely independent on state federal whatever they do their own thing it seems like the nfl is being cautiously patient because they don't want to have another ray ray situation where it's like hey ray take a long weekend and then they he sees um the actual video of him you know knocking out his wife and then all of a sudden it's like hey maybe you shouldn't come in monday uh i don't think they want that to happen again so with that in mind then, though, do you think there's a possibility that Deshaun Watson plays the entire 
season this year and then the suspension comes next year in the civil timeline yeah for sure like i think that's really possible um and we've kind of seen it it's going to be interesting because they're the nfl is so i mean they don't have a set way they go about things like we talked about jaron reed on lombardi sweep a little while ago he was not found guilty criminally for a fourth degree battery one count misdemeanor um he was suspended for six games um this is a lot more counts even if he's found innocent you'd think there's a suspension coming but again with the timeline probably being dragged along a long time um, i'm sure the nfl will probably want to see how the civil cases come out um because i'm sure they'll use some of the testimony and information from that i mean this he could definitely play a full season and if the NFL is really being patient, it looks like that's what they're doing. Yeah, one hundred percent. The suspension could come next season. It could even come really late this season, depending where the Browns are in the playoff hunt. Yeah, I mean, at this point, the only thing public, like you were just talking about, was there wasn't enough uh, evidence to hear the case, and I think the NFL could probably just point to that, saying uh, that clearly there wasn't enough evidence to even hear a case. There isn't enough evidence to suspend them. He sat out all last year. Yes, he got paid every single penny, but he sat out. You know, it, it just feels like this is going to be drug along. And then the question is, if something happens next year, let's say there's a settlement or something next year, or even if he is found guilty on some of them or whatever, I wonder if the NFL is too afraid to charge him severely because that would bring the case back to the spotlight. You know what I mean? Or they kind of just yeah. want to go silently into the night with this entire situation. Yeah, and obviously the NFL has their own set of rules, right? They can kind of be yeah. their own judge, jury, and executioner. Um, but it, they're in a tough spot because obviously we know what the backlash is. But right now it's looking like Sean Watson isn't going to be charged criminally for any of this. And it's even possible he's not charged civilly for any of this as well. Certainly he thinks he won't either. So, you know, if he gets no charges on anything... You know, it's tough for the NFL to say, hey, you know, innocent till proven guilty. You've been innocent, even with the low, you know, burden of proof, we're going to suspend you. Um, so they're really between a rock and a hard place by not getting this done earlier. But, you know, and they've set no precedent, right? So like it, they could really go anywhere with this. And I don't think it would surprise anybody, which is the scariest part. Yeah. I have, if anyone says they know what's going to happen, I think they're lying. At this point, like we really have no idea. Is there anything else about this case that you feel like uh, needs to be explained or any other information you have about it? I, I think, you know, one of the things is understanding how juries operate. Um, I've had, I've known a lot of people who have served on juries. I've been to a lot of cases. People need to understand that juries are people too. Um, there was a case in particular, I kind of want to mention, it happened in Wisconsin. Long story short, um, tragically, uh, an officer passed away, um, but the officers both had drugs in the system. The one that lived um, was testifying at the hearing, and he was, by all accounts, an asshole, according to the jury. And the jury decided not to give, you know, the police officers or the defendant um, all the charges that they could have because that police officer pissed them off so much. So like this isn't even all we're not even talking, you know, evidence. The jury can look at Deshaun Watson and love him or look at the defendants and hate them or excuse me, the prosecution and hate them and let a lot ride on that, too. Um, so even if the evidence is there, like there still might not be a charge. They still might let them off easy, let them off hard. Like public perception of you in the courtroom by the jury is a huge part that I don't think people understand is truly there, even though it shouldn't be. Great. So more uncertainty, uh, more variables, more, hey, we're not doing this by the book. Let's figure it out. It's a whole vibe thing. That's that's fun. That's good stuff. Uh I'm happy you explained. Like, honestly, I didn't know, obviously, the X's and O's, the inside baseball shit of this stuff. So it's nice to have at least an informed opinion on everything and of everything going on and hopefully what we can expect going forward. But again, 
NFL operates independently and they are, to your point, the judge, jury, and executioner of basically everything they do. No one is bigger than the NFL. So that's fun. That's good. And for some reason, Adam Schefter has a seat at the table. So I just want to throw that in there. Uh, but thank you. This is Trevor Land. Again, on the bottom of the screen, Trevor Land 2. Follow him on Twitter. Flurry Sports, give this a like, a subscribe. Share it to all your uh, misinformed people uh, on this case, or just in general. And we will see you again next time. See ya.